Neil, what kind of climate finance is available to developing countries? It's a complex picture and one that is becoming seemingly ever more complex and therefore there is a role for international initiatives such as CDKN to provide information to many countries for whom such finance is important. Perhaps what everyone is talking about at present is the Green Climate Fund which was agreed at the last uh, COP meeting of the UNFCCC and will have its first board meeting um, in fact at the end of this month, at the end of May. And CDKN has purposely chosen to look to ways to support the Green Climate Fund, develop uh, an international architecture that is both effective, efficient and equitable. Remind us what kind of resources could be flowing through the fund. There is great expectation over new and additional finance which may reach uh, very significant uh, figures over the coming years. The political agreement within the negotiation speaks of 100 billion US dollars by 2020. But I don't think we should get distracted by these numbers. What is more important to people on the ground to those most vulnerable to climate change is ensuring that money flows to meet their needs. Do you think the public sector will have to capitalise the Green Climate Fund or will the private sector have to get involved as well? There is a realisation that if the international community is going to respond to the needs that many countries have in responding to climate change, public money will not be sufficient on its own. So there is a, an understanding that one important area that CDKN um, can assist recipient countries is developing the right enabling environment, the right conditions for the private sector to bring very considerable levels of capital to play. Tell us a bit about how CDKN is helping developing countries at the national level to access climate finance and to govern it. I think it's taken time for CDKN to develop the rapport, the level of trust with um, uh, countries in order to, for countries to express what needs they, they see as being most important from an international initiative such as CDKN. Having said that, there is a body of work that's developed um, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, in Kenya, in Mozambique, in Rwanda, to name three countries. And in those countries, what governments are most interested in are, firstly, where can they access new and additional finance? But secondly, how can they make that finance most effective in order to meet the needs of those most vulnerable to climate change?